Westmore Observatory, calling dirigible Chandro. Westmore Observatory, calling dirigible Chandro. Not scared, are you, buddy? Well, I guess I was a little scared before you got up over that blizzard. Keep a secret? Yes, sir. So was I. <laughs> well, I'm still scared. What for? We're up so high we can hardly breathe. We're about to run out of oxygen. Westmore Observatory, calling dirigible Chandro. All right, flying too low now. I think on any more ice and snow. Away. Calling dirigible Chandro. Westmore Observatory, calling dirigible Chandro. Good, they finally found us. Great, and take the controls. Dirigible Chandro answering. Go ahead, Westmore. I've contacted Miss Buck's voice. Hello, Chandro. Is that Lieutenant Rogers speaking? Buck Rogers to you, Professor. Hello, Dad. We're having a swell time. Are you all right, Buck? Where are you? Okay so far, sir. Still riding above the blizzard. What's your exact position? Can't say. Within about 300 miles, sir, on account of drift. Holding about 40,000 feet elevation. Have to stay here until we ride out the storm area. I think we can do it. Breathing is getting hard. Running low on oxygen, sir. I'm going to drop down a couple of thousand feet. I've got to have air. Throw our ballast. We're losing altitude. We're going down where we can breathe. Are you fool? We're loading down with ice. Maybe too late now to get this weight. Professor, we've dropped down into the storm. Buck's trying to climb out, but he can't make it. What are you going to do? Bail up before we crash! Stop him, Mitchell. He'll freeze to death before he lands. Oh, it's better than tying him here like rats. Do you think there's any chance for them, Professor? I'm afraid they're likely to crash, but there is one chance. Hello, buddy, can you hear me? Yes. Then listen carefully. Do you remember that tank of Nibano gas I put aboard just before you took off? Yes, sir, I do. If you're forced down, will you promise me to turn the lever on that tank as far to the right as you can, buddy? Yes, sir, I will. No, I don't get it. Uh, what is Nibano gas? It's a recent discovery of the professors, uh, a gas that induces suspended animation. Suspended animation? Well, that's a lot of hokum, isn't it? Like uh, perpetual motion and showing. You see that dog? He's been in there nearly three months. Huh. What's strange about that? He's dead, isn't he? He's neither dead nor alive for the time being. do come to life. Here, feel his heart. Why? It's starting to beat. I put a tank of that gas aboard the Chandro as a precautionary measure. If they were forced down in some inaccessible spot, I hoped it would sustain their lives until relief ships could rescue them. What is it, buddy? Buck says we're going to crash. Go goodbye, Dad. Ask Buck for his approximate latitude and longitude. Buck, Professor Morgan wants to know your approximate latitude. What's happened? Hello, Chandro. Bad, buddy. Close to Hello. Hello. Sandro just crashed. Give me your latitude and longitude and turn on the Navano gas. The gas is turned on, sir. Latitude. Latitude about 70 north, sir. Longitude. Longitude.
were right, Lacey. It's the remains of some ancient type of spaceship. Wonder why we never saw it before. I've flown over this place a hundred times. It's probably covered with ice most of the year. Let's take a closer look. We'll use our disintegrator pistols. Some sort of gas. <laughs> Certainly is an antique. They're in a perfect state of preservation. Must have been frozen since the ship crashed. natural temperature. Let's get them out of here. This gas is making me drowsy. Well, uh, take hold of his feet. Why? He's alive! Sure I'm alive. What's wrong with you? Uniform. Buddy. Yeah. Buddy, step out of it. Uh, he's all right. Professor Morgan's gas sure did the trick. How long have you been looking for us? Why, we weren't looking for you. Well, that doesn't make any difference. You found us anyway. I think we'd better take him to Professor Cure. Our patrol ship is beyond that point of rocks. Now, now wait a minute. March. at least a hundred years ahead of anything I ever saw. I wonder how fast we're going. About a thousand miles an hour at least. Polar Patrol, calling operations office. Polar Patrol, calling operations office. Operations office. Go ahead, Polar Patrol. Golly, they sure dial in quick. Put this call through to scientist General Hewer. It is urgent. One moment. Go ahead. Captain Rankin speaking. We're approaching the city with two prisoners, found in a dirigible. A dirigible? That's impossible. Such ships haven't been used since the 20th century. 20th century? What does he mean? I don't know. The ship was frozen in the tip of Bering Glacier. The prisoners were in a state of suspended animation when we found them. Bring them directly to me when you land. That is all. General Suspect, sir. You're to come directly to his headquarters. 
Thank you, Lieutenant. Come along, men. So what kind of an elevator is that, anyway? By radioactivity, it breaks down the atoms of the body to their component parts. And reversing polarity reassembles them wherever desired. Take my place, Lieutenant Deering. Follow our spaceship through the televi. How did you come to be in that dirigible? I was in command. We'd taken off from New York and were making a transpolar flight around the world when... Uh, what year was that? 1938. 1938? Impossible. Let me verify that. Nineteen thirty-eight. Uh-huh. There was such an expedition. Uh, your name, please. Buck Rogers. Uh, Lieutenant Rogers, officially. And yours, my boy? My name is George Wade, but I'm usually called Buddy. <laughs> Nirvana Gas. That explains it then. Rankin, we are witnesses to a scientific miracle. By means of a gas discovered by Professor Morgan, these two people have remained in a state of suspended animation for 500 years. 500 years? That, that makes me old enough to be my own great-grandfather. But, Professor Hewer, that's impossible, sir. Dr. Hewer, Killer Kane has captured another of our pilots. <laughs> Save yourself considerable discomfort by telling me where to find the entrance to the hidden city. I do not remember. I think I know a way to make you remember. Look into that instrument. Look into it. Those men were once pilots of Dr. Hure's ships. Now they are living robots. Men robbed of all willpower while they wear the helmets I had designed for them. Shall I have you measured for a robot's helmet? Or will you tell me where the entrance to the hidden city is? I do not remember. Take him away! I, I, I don't understand, sir. Uh, who is this man called Killer Kane? He is the result of the stupidity of the men of your century. You failed to stamp out lawlessness, and in the end, the criminal became stronger than the law. Racketeers, you call them. Today, they rule the world as cruelly as they ruled their gangs in your day. Well, isn't there any chance of help from an outside source? Only from men on some other planet. Another planet? <laughs> that doesn't sound very hopeful. It could be. But our spaceships seem unable to, to slip through Kane's air blockade. We've lost five thus far trying it. You mean you actually have ships that can travel from planet to planet? Of course. And if you have ships that can travel that far, you know, I think I know a way of running that blockade. Well, if you have any plans, I'm ready to listen to them. But to me, it seems much hopeless. Am I right, Marshal Craig, in assuming that you can operate a plane from the ground at such a distance, mind you, by means of radio? That's correct, Rogers. Well then, sir, why don't you send up such a ship as a decoy? While Kane's patrol is following it, I can slip through in a spaceship and get help from Saturn. We've already lost too many ships and crews. We can't afford to try it. It seems to me you can't afford not to try it, sir. Rogers is right, Marshal. 
Unless we get help from Saturn, our cause is lost. Very well, sir. You're in charge. Thank you very much. Lieutenant Deering, you will go with Rogers to establish a means of communication with Saturn, if you do get through to that planet. Spaceships. Patrol ship 74 calling 60,000 foot patrol. Shall I lay our course directly for Saturn now, Buck? May as well. Hey, Buck, look. They fell for it, all right. How can they fly that spaceship with no one in it? We can direct all the aircraft from the control room until they reach the outer atmosphere. I don't think we'll run into any more trouble. Why don't you take a nap, Wilma? I'll, I'll take the controls. Thanks very much. set up ahead. Looks like a gray wall. That's the outer atmosphere of Saturn, buddy. It's ten times denser than the air around the Earth. What was that? I don't know. Oh, it's two of Killer Kane's ships coming up fast behind us. Charge your speed to one half. If we do, they'll get away from us. Don't worry about that. They'll either have to slow down or go up and smoke. Retarding rockets. If we enter that atmosphere at this rate of speed, the friction will bring us to a crisp. Look, they smashed some rockets. I can't fire them. in the oxygen tanks. If they explode, we'll be blown to atoms. Buddy, take the controls. The portholes are giving way, Buck. Right? That's no use. The heat is melted at the valve hands. So move, buddy. There's only one hope for us. Climb above this atmosphere back into outer space. <laughs> 